Hey guys, it's Dad. Um, it is Thursday afternoon, and tomorrow I'm going to be on a plane to Portland, which I'm really excited about. Um, but it also means that I'm not going to be playing for a couple of days. Um, I'm not going to be on the server for a couple of days. Uh, there's a possibility that um, another matchmaking stress test might happen this weekend, in which case you guys might get to see me actually play with someone that I play all the time. Um, but we'll wait on that because um, it was such a pain getting into a lobby last time that uh, I'm not counting on it, but that'll be really fun. Uh, meanwhile, I just wanted to make a quick video uh, because somebody mentioned um, the Widowmaker uh, to me yesterday and it got me thinking about uh, weapons that I either actively avoid or um, simply just have forgotten about either because I'm intimidated uh, using it or it's for a class that I just never play. Um, although at this point I've, I've forced myself to play all the classes so much that um, maybe Sniper is the only one that I can really say that about. I mean, I even will actively play Spy if I have to. <laughs> Um, so it only really goes well part of the time. So, um, I actually, uh, already went back and kind of, um, decided on my loadouts for the next week already, but I just wanted to run through them with you guys in a separate video, and the gameplay will be, um, will come later when I have time to actually sit down and test them out. But the idea is basically that um, I'm going to go and revisit all the weapons that I have pretty much given up on or avoided. And uh, because this all started with our dear NG, we're going to go back to our NG and I'll just go over um, what I've picked out for him. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, we have the Widowmaker, um, which uh, if you're not familiar with it, it draws from your ammo or your metal reserves. Um, but if you land a successful hit, you will get that ammo back as a return. Uh, basically meaning that if you are a crack shot, um, you will be able to pretty much endlessly um, fire without having to worry about ammunition um, and also be able to uh, conserve resources if you're also doing active upkeep on your buildings during combat. Um, so I have that equipped and I've actually um, gotten a few hours in in the past two days with it and really not done very well um, because in most cases like if you're in the middle of upgrading or um, fixing up your buildings um, that are under fire you're not going to have a full um, ammo reserve uh, especially if someone's just uh, with your dispenser <laughs> and you're kind of out there trying to keep it together um, so you have maybe like one good shot at um, you know taking your enemy down and getting your metal back so uh, that's pretty tough for me like I'm a lot better I'm not the worst at aiming but it really does help if I have enough ammunition that I don't have to worry about um, maybe kind of spraying a little bit wildly. <laughs> um, and before I um, move forward, I do want to say that uh, it's probably in the last month, maybe two weeks, that I switched over um, to strange versions of most of my weapons. Um, so please don't judge me too harshly on the fact that uh, my Wrangler has zero kills. Um, but I did pick this because I really don't wrangle very much at all. Um, when it comes to uh, the engineer's secondary weapons, there really aren't very many choices that are creative. Um, he essentially uses a pistol or any reskin of a pistol like the Ligramorph, um, which functions exactly the same. Um, then he has the Wrangler, uh, which is also reskinned as a Geiger counter, um, works exactly the same way. Um, and then finally there's a short circuit, which um, I might switch over to that halfway um, in the week because I do have some practice like sentry jumping um, back when I was really interested in um, getting the hang of that um, with the Wrangler, uh, but I don't have a lot of experience um, kind of uh, 
getting rid of projectiles, which you can do um, if you alt-fire your short circuit. Um, and I actually don't know if they've messed with it in any of the um, patches or updates we've had um, in the last few months, uh, just because I haven't kept up with it. And I actually really don't read or uh, pay attention to most of those things unless it's about um, the flog and the degrees are the only ones that I've really um, paid attention to. Um, so we'll start with the Wrangler and see how I do. Um, I personally don't really like it because it does have that cooldown period when you unequip or you switch your weapons where your sentry is inactive and um, completely vulnerable to attack. Uh, I think it's like two or three second cooldown period, um, something like that. Um, and then finally for his tertiary weapon, um, or you know, generally his building weapon, um, I'll have the, what is it, the Southern Hospitality or the Jag, um, but we're going to use the Eureka effect this week, which I still haven't made up my mind about whether it's um, one of those just like novelty um, weapons from this game that don't really have any actual utility or could um, be uh, better replaced with a different weapon, or if it's one of those kind of genius items that if you get the hang of, um, you can really master what you're doing. It's just that it happens to look so silly. So I haven't decided that yet, but um, we're going to use it. I've used a little bit in the past. Um, what I really like is that all you have to do is set up a teleporter exit, not even get it up and running in order for you to return to your building site very quickly. Um, but it does have that super silly animation, and um, yeah, so we're gonna have fun with that. Um, and then super duper quick, uh, the backscatter is a gun that I use um, the least with, um, I think, the Force of Nature, which I had a pretty good run with for a couple of weeks and then kind of just, um, just forgot about. Um, those two are probably my least used um, primary scout weapons. Um, the short stop also, like, the force of nature and the short stop I probably juggle around a little bit, but the backscatter I really just, I never use. Um, but I'm kind of interested to see the mini crits uh, in action, um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and then it's almost kind of like unbelievable that uh, whoever has this equipped won't take fall damage. And I think I've had this reaction in the past and like tested it out specifically just for that reason and then put it away because I saw really nothing that attracted me to the gun otherwise. Um, and just every time I, I remind myself that this weapon exists, it kind of blows my mind that it hasn't been, that aspect of it hasn't been nerfed or in some way tweaked a little bit or had any like kind of like modifier attached to it. Like the wearer will never take fall damage if um, so, uh, like, I, I literally find that hard to believe, um, but TF2 would never lie to me, so we're just gonna see it in action. And then, um, the scout has a lot of, um, pretty much just, uh, reskins of the stock bat, just a melee weapon that you hit things with and nothing particularly special happens, but he has a couple that does self-damage, um, the Boston Basher and, um, what is it? Uh, the Three Rune Blade. Um, and then beyond that, yeah, the Candy Cane, like, uh, people drop um, med packs when they die. The Atomizer will uh, allow you to triple jump with, I think it's a negative 10 HP penalty. Um, but I never use the Strange uh, Rap Assassin. The Rap Assassin, I think, alt fires um, a Christmas ornament that can cause. Uh, um, a bleeding after effect on the uh, recipient, um, same as the Boston Basher. Um, and there's a pretty severe damage penalty, um, but you can't hit yourself until you bleed to death, so uh, it's a little bit different. Um, Soldier, I just picked this really weird combination, like the Cow Mangler, um, it doesn't, I don't think, do as much damage on buildings unless that's changed and or I had that wrong to begin with, but um, this, uh, the Man Melter, which I have equipped for the Pyro for this week, um, 
and um, what else is there? The Righteous Bison, like all of those sort of um, space age kind of ray shooting weapons have always like all felt so incredibly weird and unsatisfying. And I don't know how much of that is just psychological in my head um, because like the sounds and the reload animations are so unfamiliar. Um, like I really am a lot more happy using guns that feel like guns. Um, but yeah, I don't use this guy at all, uh, so we'll try and fry some dudes with it. Um, the base jumper, when I first got it, I just played with it a lot, um, but paired with the market gardener, which I'm already awful with, like I really, I don't think I've ever landed a successful market garden, literally. Um, and part of it is that I just don't try because, because, uh, um, I'm a little wimp who's afraid of failure, <laughs> um, but also, uh, just, um, it, if you pair the base jumper, which gives you a very, like, sleek gliding descent, um, with the market gardener, you kind of pretty much, um, unless you're playing with total chumps, um, you're removing the aspect of, uh, the element of surprise, um, which when you're landing, like, a really brutal rocket jump and kind of just, like, plummeting down to earth and you land that market garden, like, it's terrifying, um, back when I started playing, uh, I didn't understand that that was a thing that people did, um, and the sound always just sounded to me like a backstab, and it would just get me so paranoid. Um, it takes a lot of skill, I think, to master, um, in my mind, uh, and it's one of those things, like, there are a lot of things that I've practiced specifically, like, before I was talking about sentry jumping, like, I would go on an empty server and just practice that for hours, um, but market gardening, I've never tried it, so um, we're really gonna make ourselves like easy sniper bait and uh, use the base jumper and the market gardener all week paired with uh, the worst rocket launcher on earth. <laughs> um, Pyro, uh, I was saying that I, I just, I rely on the degreaser so much. Um, I don't know if you guys remember when I first got this, but it's probably maybe a month ago and uh, um, I have like a decent amount of kills on it. Um, I think it's pretty good. Uh, the rain blower is actually, I think, just has the exact same stats as um, just the stock primary. So, I mean, I might switch from that to either the flogger or the back burner. I haven't decided yet, but um, <coughs> that's what we're gonna do this week is not use a degreaser. That's the assignment. Um, <laughs> the man melter uh so like i know i know that all the um flare guns including you know the squirt shot and the detonator as well as the stock flare gun have their own reload animations um which is essentially the same as um the time that it takes for the man melter to recharge its like space age um electron particle whatever business, but there's something so unsatisfying about that little click sound that it makes. Um, I love that you can alt fire to put out your teammates, but if you pair that with um, a standard, any one of the standard um, flamethrowers, um, I guess you can conserve on ammo, but it's not, it's a little bit redundant, I think. Um, it's very rare that I run out of ammo because I've reflected so much or hair blasted so much. Um, this one, it just, I've never used it at all. I think it's so interesting what it can do, um, but I've never even witnessed it. I think the four kills that I do have on it are probably literally just accidents, like just me wildly swinging it um, out of panic. Um, I've never really witnessed or noticed for myself. Um, how um, the medic and the uh, medic's patient, I guess, are affected. So um, it's either this or the power jack because I've never really used the power jack um, to its full extent. I've pretty much just equipped it as a melee weapon um, when I just needed a break from like the home wrecker or, or the neon annihilator or something like that. But um, we're gonna use it third degree this week. I actually have a demo night contract active at this moment. 
Um, so I have loaded them out with the charge and charge, which I never use. Um, I just got this in a trade um, from Extreme. Uh, so these two kills are from the round that I just played today. Um, and it's actually really satisfying, literally just slamming into somebody and demolishing them. But uh, at the same time, I hate losing control over um, uh, the directionality um, of, you know, um, my attack. Um, the fact that I can U-turn or take someone by surprise um, by even just adjusting um, my trajectory just a little bit to take someone by surprise. Uh, you know, when someone thinks that uh, you're going straight for the person next to you and then, but you're really after um, that person. Um, that's what I really like about um, the Tide Turner. Um, so we're going to use this one instead. Uh, gonna practice our double donking. Um, I like the loose cannon, it's very uh, satisfying to use. And there are really no grenade launchers that. Um, I haven't pretty much equally used, but I equally kind of don't use all of them in that I don't play demo that much. Um, but uh, we'll do that. Um, the only reason I'm not using like the Quickie Bomb or the Sticky Bomb um, launcher or even the Scottish Resistance, which like the Eureka effect, I think is one of those weapons where <coughs> I still haven't decided if um, smart use makes it a genius weapon or if it's just some really silly idea that somebody at Valve came up with. Um, the reason I'm not using any of the various sticky bomb launcher variations, uh, much as I'd like to practice my air shots with them and stuff like that, uh, is because I have a demo night contract and I would like to be able to um, charge on people. And then finally we have uh, the half set to Ichi, which has either been buffed or nerfed depending on um, how you see it, uh, it used to be that you were honor bound <laughs> to not resheath it, like you weren't able to put it away unless you landed at least one kill with it, um, if you did bring it out. Uh, but now I think, um, I'm not really reading this right now, but yeah, you just take a, um, a damage penalty. Um, so you're just kind of like lightly penalized for putting it away. Um, depending on, I mean, where you were at, uh, that 50 HP could be um, life or death for you, um, but in general, I don't think that's really a heavy penalty um, compared to the fact that if you really needed to switch to your primary in the past, you weren't allowed to do that at all. So that'll be our demo night, and he's looking real good. Um, Brass Beast, just don't use it. I don't. Um, it has a slower uh, spin up time, I think. Uh, I also just find it like inexplicably incredibly unattractive and ugly, <laughs> which is neither here nor there, but um, I rely on the Thomas Love, so we're going to try and get some kills on this guy, um, which I think just when I bought it, it had uh, buildings destroyed um, stat counter on it too, so we'll try and do our best with that. Uh, family business, I usually just go stock shotgun, so... Um, I really have no strong feelings about any of his secondary weapons. Um, sandwich, um, the Del Oaks bar, uh, any of that, like, um, I don't really care. So we'll just go with the family business because um, it's just different from our standard shotgun. And this guy, I think, is the one that marks you for death uh, and um, gives you a speed boost. Um, so. I don't really know what that means, in, like practically speaking, like I understand what it, what it means to be marked for death, but I just want to see how it affects gameplay and how it affects um, how I survive during an actual round. Um, we did our NG, our medic. Uh, so I think like maybe a week or two ago, um, something like that, um, I had 53 kills on um, my, my Blutsager, um, and I was saying how I'm having a complete love affair with it because I had never really had any faith in the medic's um, primary weapon. Um, I never really paid attention to them. I just assumed that they were all pretty much useless and that um, a medic could only ever be a support class. Um, but I've kind of been excited to switch between um, 
providing support for my teammates, which obviously is my primary um, objective, but also when I'm left out in the cold and uh, don't really have an option to run away to um, actually practice kind of leading um, with my needles, my syringes, <laughs> um, using my needles to take down um, what I consider pretty uh, big targets. And it's been actually so satisfying. Um, I have a couple of instances recorded on video that are up on YouTube of me taking down like a charging demo or a soldier um, like single-handedly with a syringe gun and with my blitzauger and it's been really great. So I've gotten almost 100 kills in the last week um, with this and uh, I don't know really if that's a lot or a little but for, for me that's a lot. Um, especially given how, how little I've used um, the medic primaries in the past. Um, but so this week we're going to be using the crossbow because we, we never use the crossbow and you can't headshot with it. Um, and uh, it's very slow to reload. Um, I like that you can heal as well as damage. So um, you don't really need to worry about wasting ammo, guessing if someone's a spy or not because uh, I mean, I guess you would be healing the Disguised Spy, I don't really know, I haven't paid attention, but in any case, um, it goes to some use either way. Um, I don't know if any of what I just said made any sense, but uh, that just goes to show you how little I really understand how the Crusader's crossbow works. Um, and out of all my Mediguns, um, which I circulate through pretty evenly, um, the vaccinator is the one that I use the least, and this is probably the third weapon um, on top of the Eureka effect and uh, the Scottish resistance where I feel like it's more of a concept piece, you know? Um, someone was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if instead of one Uber, there were four mini Ubers, and um, instead of just being a medigun, you could, you know, spam the reload key. Uh, <laughs> in order to switch between um, resistances, damage resistances, and basically make the medigun the, like an inc incredibly complicated uh, piece of machinery. Um, yeah, that'd be a really cool idea, um, someone said at Valve. Um, so that means we're going to use it. And um, I usually have the Uber saw. Um, I don't use my saw much anyway, but if I'm attempting to do like, you know, the um, medic duo uber chain, um, I just have the uber saw equipped all the time. Um, the vita saw I've used a few times, I get it, I get how it works. Uh, the amputator, I'm just gonna taunt with it all week. Uh, I doubt it's really gonna affect my gameplay because that's how little I use um, the mixed tertiary. Uh, the sniper at this point because I forced myself to play all nine classes um, as much as possible as well as participated in um, both of the contract based um, uh, releases that TF2 has had um, so far. Um, I've had an opportunity to play pretty much everything but with the sniper I've always kind of gotten away with um, getting points in different ways uh, <laughs> instead of um, by, you know, using the primary weapon. So this week we're going to use the one that I've used the least, which is the piss gun, um, which you can't headshot with, um, which is fine by me. <laughs> it takes the pressure off of needing to headshot. Um, and then on top of that, we'll use the danger shield, which um, I never used when people talk about how it used to be better. Um, I just don't listen to them because I really just don't care and I hate playing snipers so much. Um, although in a fit of reminiscence, I did go back and look at, um, my little, uh, one moment of glory as a sniper where I landed, like, three headshots and got, like, five kills in one lifetime and whatever, um, there's, like, a clip of that way back when, um, and it gave me a warm feeling, but, uh, still not really gonna play him if I don't have to. And then the spy, I'm gonna switch from the standard, um, ambassador. Um, which is kind of seen as like the king, I feel like, just because it can headshot and people love the idea of headshots, but I actually really love the crits that get stored on the diamondback, um, and 
at the same time, I don't really get how that works. Kind of like how I didn't really get how the frontier justice worked until probably this past month when I forced myself to use it. So that paired with the spicicle kind of doesn't really even make that much sense if I'm not going to be using um, the dead ringer. I think the dead ringer and the spicicle go really well together. Um, for when when you have a paranoid team that uh, has a lot of pyros by checking, um, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm like entirely a cloak and dagger person, because um, I don't like the idea of like conserving cloak and like all of that. Just I would rather kind of sneak around and crouch and take my time and then get the one thing I need to get done done. Uh, but that's not okay this week, so we're not gonna do that. And just as a finishing touch, um, for uh, the fourth weapon slot, the spy only really has two options plus a bunch of reskins, which is either the sapper, um, which, you know, you can get the talking Wheatley dude, you can get, I don't even know what this is, I kind of hate it and I'll probably get rid of it. Um, but uh, the red tape recorder actually, I think, unless they've changed it, works differently in that... Uh, Instead of kind of disabling and fizzling out um, the Angie's buildings, um, what it will do is basically just reverse the building process. So um, in practicality, it may or may not be the same, but uh, I feel like it might affect gameplay a little bit differently. Um, and of course, as the building is folding back into itself, it is disabled. So. Um, yeah, I don't really know how that's going to work, which will make it fun. So um, I am going to be gone for the next four days. Uh, I'm not going to be on the server for the next four days. Uh, we might be able to get into stress test in the next four days, but basically I'm really not going to be here, uh, not going to have a chance to record for sure. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys back here, there, um, in-game on... Monday or Tuesday at the latest and um, hopefully I'll be able to say hi to you guys from Portland and until then I will simply have to say bye